The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our to the first part of our webinar series, SAP Cloud Security Madness. Uh, my name is Michael Kummer. I'm going to be your uh, moderator, at least, at least initially. Um, today's webinar, or to, yeah, today's webinar is uh, one of seven that we will uh, be hosting over the next couple of weeks. Um, so by signing up to this one, you should have gotten also invitations to all the other ones. Um, topic for the whole series is cloud security. And what do you have to consider? Uh, today's webinar in particular is gonna be an overview webinar. So we're gonna tell you on a high level uh, you know, what this is all about. And then in the subsequent webinars, we'll dive into much more detail on those specific topics. Uh, the two presenters today are gonna to be Karsten Olt from our German office and Alessandro Banzer from our um, Florida office here. And these two will guide you through the presentation. Uh, just a, a couple of administrative things before we get started. Uh, today's session and all the other ones will be recorded and you will receive an email with a link to the recording, typically within 24 hours. Um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, if anything doesn't make sense um, or uh, doesn't add up to you, please use the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, whoever is not speaking, uh, of the two, we'll keep an eye on those questions and we'll answer them throughout the webinar. We'll also have some time, hopefully at the end of the webinar, to talk more about any of the questions that we didn't have a chance to answer. And if we run out of time, rest assured, we will be answering all of those questions offline and then send out an email with uh, the answers. And uh, with that said, I'm gonna hand it over to Alessandro, who will guide you through uh, the initial part of the presentation, talk about the agenda and what you can expect from our webinar series. Thanks again for joining. Thank you, Michael. Welcome everyone. My name is Alessandro Benzer. Just a quick introduction. Um, so today we'll, be, as Michael already mentioned, we'll talk about the basics and, and an overview about cloud security, SAP cloud security. We'll be talking about the business technology platform, which is used to be the, um, the SAP, the sub cloud platform was you know, recently renamed. We'll talk about what is there, what's the big picture, um, what do we have to understand, what, is, what services SAP provides in the business technology platform. There's three um, specific services we will be talking through um, this webinar series. That's the IHG, the IPS, and the IAS. We'll talk more um, specifically about those and what they mean and what they do. For those of you that are not familiar with those yet, um, we'll also talk about um, different products and services that we offer um, as part or in, in the cloud. Um, but like I said, today will be more an overview just to, to break ground and so everyone's on, on the same page. On the next slide, and I have to tell Carson to move slides, um, just who we are. Um, like Michael said, we have three speakers throughout this webinar series. Myself, Alessandro Benzer, I'm in charge of the um, Americas region within Exciting. I've, my background is is uh, GRC, sub access control, IHG, everything when it comes to access governance. Um, then I have today with me Carsten. Carsten is from our German uh, Germany office. He's the managing director for cloud security. He has a lot of experience when it comes to signals and on authentication. And then Carsten can, can tell you more later um, what his strength is and his, his background. But he's really the guy when it comes to secure authentication and signals and on. And then last but not least, we have, have Stefan Schatto. He's also from our um, European team. He's uh, in Switzerland. He's our managing director for SAP IDM. So he's our IDM guru when it comes to identity management on-premise, but also then in the cloud. With that being said, um, when we take a look at the agenda on the next slide, um, like Michael already mentioned, we have seven different webinars. Today will just be the breaking ground, so to say an overview of what is cloud security, what are the services we have. Then next week, um, on next Tuesday, um, all the times here are Eastern. I know a few of you guys that are joining from, from Europe. In the US, we just uh, switched to daylight, 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 daylight saving time, sorry. Um, so right now it's a five um, hour difference to the Central European time zone. But then as of the third webinar, it will be 5 p.m. In, in Europe. Right now it's 4 p.m. So the first two will have a slightly different um, schedule if you're joining from Europe. The second webinar will be a, about IPS, the Cloud Identity Provisioning Services. So we'll talk about uh, more specifically how we can automate identity life cycles. We then in the third webinar talk about IHE. That's basically our access control 
um, if you're familiar with sub access control in the cloud so we'll talk about access governance how can we run risk analysis um, do provisioning um, workflows and so on through IAG the fourth one will be specifically about authentication that's the IAS webinar how can we secure authentication how can we establish things and on in the cloud not only on premise but also in the cloud so those first three um, are specifically about those solutions um, what they are what we can expect from them and then we have three more um, where we also talk more about the integration the fifth webinar is about IHG integration with access control there's an IHG bridge scenario how we can con um, basically um, connect our on-premise access control with IHG and then extend that functionality in the, into the cloud we have a specific one for HR driven identity lifecycle. So if you're using success factors as an example, and you want to do the HR trigger, classical HR trigger from sub access control. So basically um, setting, setting up that hire to retire process through success factors as an example. So we you know we create a user or an employee in, in, in the success factors, and then we want to automatically provision that user across our landscape. That's, for example, possible with IHG, but also in combination with then the IES and IPS in the background of, of IHG. And then the very last one will be about identity management, identity management 8.0, and how that can also be extended into the cloud to have a hybrid um, IDM solution where we can provision on premise, uh, but also in the, the cloud applications. Perfect. And the next slide, Carsten. Um, just a few words about Exciting for those of you that don't know us yet. Um, Exciting has been founded back in 2008. We have um, global operations, so we are still headquartered in Switzerland, in, in Zurich to be more specific. But then we have offices throughout um, Europe, uh, mainly in, in Germany, in England, but then also in Romania. And since 2016, we're also in the United States. We have, um, you know, trying to and then, you know, reach a or become a, a global player in the world of sub security. And you know, that's basically um, what this is also about, not just on premise security, but also cloud security. And that's what, what the topic is about um, for the next seven webinars. Like I said, um, you know, we're um, been founded back in 2008, still headquartered in Switzerland. We have 80 plus employees, so we're, we're growing. We have a special relationship with SAP, we're a sub silver partner. We have recognized expertise in different areas. Um, our solutions, especially our exciting authorizations management suite, which is an automation solution for authorizations management, um, has been certified by SAP. There's a sub note, even a, a sub note that recommends to use the XCMS for certain scenarios when it comes to RFC optimizations, for example. Um, and from that perspective, we have a very cl close relationship with, with SAP, not only as a sub silver partner and with the recognized expertise, but also in the area of, of education, we're an educational partner, meaning we do a lot of trainings for SAP. So if you book an SAP training, um, if it, you know, uh, let it be about GRC or singles and on or authorizations in general, it's very likely you're going to, to speak to one of our employees that works as a trainer for SAP. So basically SAP subcontracts us um, when it comes to educational um, trainings. With that being said, Carson, I believe I'm, um, you know, one more slide. Um, just what we do, like I said, we have one main product, that's our um, exciting authorizations management suite, where it comes to automating and simplifying authorizations management, mainly on the on-premise side. So if you have an up up system like an ECC or S4 HANA, we can help you building roles more um, uh, efficiently, more sustainable, um, saving, saving you time, um, you know, and, and get you on the next level when it comes to security. We also have surrounding uh, products. Um, for example, we have central workflows. It's basically like a, a CUA um, that goes a little bit beyond just one system that's so similar to CUA, similar to more so uh, an IDM. So basically a small IDM solution for your up up um, world. So different products we offer. Then certainly, like I mentioned, we have different services and consulting that kind of goes hand in hand. We do a lot of trainings for SAP, but also ourselves providing workshops to our customers. We have specific services um, when it comes to um, up up issues or up up security issues, be it RFC, you have issues with your RFCs, you want to harden them. We can provide you uh, redesign services around that. We do a lot of um, uh, redesigns in general, you know, redesigning your your dialogue user, your technical users, and so on. And then certainly also in the area of cloud, implementing cloud solutions, be it IHG um, or a hybrid IDM and so on. And that kind of goes hand in hand into the consulting side, you know, where we also provide 
um, different um, consulting services, not only for the cloud, but also for the on-premise world, pretty much everything that is kind of under the topic of, of, of security. Perfect. Great. And I have to Carson. Perfect. Thank you, Alessandro. And uh, hello and good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending where you're joining from. I'm Carsten, and I will yeah, guide you through the rest of the presentation, the technical uh, stuff now, and uh, let's start, I would say. <clears throat> First of all, as Alessandro already mentioned, um, this is more or less an overview presentation in the first step. So we want to take you to the journey into the cloud world of SAP. And in this first session, you can expect some insights into the security architecture that comes with the SAP business technology platform. And we also will uh, cover more some news and information about the direction that SAP is going to and how the uh, business technology platform and its services will evolve over the next uh, years. So don't expect many SAP marketing slides. We rather focus on educational content and uh, information that will hopefully of benefit for you. All right, so now let's start here where the existing SAP infrastructure uh, which should be integrated into the cloud. And the keyword is always hybrid. So there is rarely never just the cloud. As far as the traditional on-premise world is concerned, um, companies here, they know the architecture. Right? They know the established systems. They know their technology and the standards behind and also the processes related around them. And um, the cloud side shows that the topic is very different. It is different when it comes to the technology standards, the procedures that are used for authentication and authorization, the interfaces and the processes, as well as the development tools. So it's a new complexity and that also brings requirements for a different skill set that a modern SAP administrator now has to cover. So there is no longer just the SAP basis who is responsible for the SAP cloud. So that's what we have made the experience that is often very unclear. So new positions have to be established in the companies, cloud strategies have to be developed, and that is really an issue at the moment. So in short, SAP is on everyone's, let's say, agenda, the cloud topics, but very few have the time really to deal with it in the required detail. And if we take a look at a typical SAP customer, that may already have solved its challenges related to security in the on-premise world. Let's say he has authentication and single sign-on in use, and identity management, and manage his authorizations maybe with the help of our XAMS. And it's clear that there is a multi-cloud world for a while now. So companies are moving to Azure Active Directory, they use Office 365, they maybe synchronize users using AD Connect from the on-prem to the Azure tenant, and they use other software as a service applications as well. And also a multi-vendor strategy is typical best practice. So companies utilize infrastructure from different providers or hyperscalers. And of course, we will talk about the SAP cloud in a minute. So it is quite normal with having many cloud landscapes involved and there's never just the cloud. That's important to understand. However, but before we talk about the uh, sub business technology platform in more detail, Alessandro will shortly take over again and provide you with some basics about typical cloud deployment and service models. Yeah, when it comes to the, the cloud deployment models, there's different ways and you know we kind of have to understand what it is and where we are. Um, we, we all heard you know, the terms like public cloud, private cloud, even hybrid cloud. What does it all mean? Um, not only in the, in the area of SAP, but in, in, in general. Um, public cloud is, is basically where we're um, utilizing um, the entire infrastructure from a, from a public cloud provider. And we're basically operating in, in, in an environment where other customers also operate on, this, on the same, in the same um, area. That could be something as simple or, or as an example could be the S4HANA cloud. If you go into the S4HANA public cloud, where SAP basically provides the entire platform, the infrastructure, but also the application. And we as a customer, if we're in the public cloud, we're just using one tenant within that, um, that, that entire 
um, uh, cloud infrastructure, so to say. But we're basically sharing um, all the hardware, all the resources behind that with other customers. That's a typical um, uh, public cloud scenario. The private cloud is basically similar to what we have today in the on-premise world. It's just hosted in the cloud. So we're using a hyperscaler, be it SAP itself with the HANA Enterprise Cloud, or be it AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, different cloud providers there we could utilize. By the end of the day, we're, we're responsible for our um, own applications, uh, as an example, um, and we're not sharing um, the application data with other customers. In a hybrid cloud, it's more, um, they've basically taken the best of both worlds. Why the best of both, both worlds? When we think about the, the public cloud, because you know it's we're sharing um, the resources of the infrastructure, so to say, the, the, the applications behind. Um, you know we can scale it better. So when we think about um, another example would be IAG, the Identity Access Governance in the cloud. That's a public cloud application where we're basically utilizing the the, the performance from the entire cloud. Um, and in a hybrid cloud, I could utilize the IAG together with my sub access control, for example, which I'm running on the private cloud. So I'm basically having the flexibility from access control that I host myself. So I have full accessibility to that private cloud. I can manage it the way I want. I can customize. That's what private cloud offers me. And then I'm, I'm extending that functionality with services from the public cloud, like for example, IHE. So I'm, I'm doing a hybrid approach um, of the two and trying to utilize the best of both worlds. On the next slide also, not just you know, pri private, public cloud and so on, also when it comes to different service models, we can, nowadays we can, we can basically subscribe to whatever we want and we call it as a service. So we can basically do, um, when we're starting from, from the bottom up, you know, the first thing we, 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 we started to outsource is our infrastructure. So basically the IAS, the infrastructure as a service where you know, we ask uh, like a hyperscaler, whoever it is, um, to host my data center, to host my hardware, so to say. Then on top of that, I can add more services. That could be basically today, anything as a service, whether it be content as a service, function as a service, whatever I want. Um, but then also the platform as a service. So I'm, I'm basically utilizing an application that um, that's there or the, the underlying platform that the application uses, but then also um, uh, you know, the entire software as a service, um, which for example, I mentioned the IHE as a, as a good example, is software as a service where I'm utilizing SAP's um, infrastructure. I'm utilizing the platform, which is the business technology platform as an example. And then I'm also using the software, which is the IHE. And depending on what I want, you know, I can, I can um, use um, whatever I need and where I feel uh, feel comfortable. Here, when we compare the different service models, I think that's that's important as well to kind of visualize um, what is it when we when we think about the on-site or the the on-premise, so to say, more or also the, the private cloud side, which is the left um, column here, where we basically you know it's always the question who's responsible for what, who manages what, and 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 what is in my responsibility to to take care and to to to, to deal with. In the on-premise world or the private cloud, very often it's that you know, what we outsource or might outsource is the data center itself. We might use a, hyper a hyperscaler, um, maybe not, but we're basically responsible for everything above that. So, you know, applications, the data, the database, security, the runtime environment, the operating system, we have to patch Windows, we have to patch Linux and so on, um, but also then the, the physical servers um, and so on. If you go more into the infrastructure as a service, we're trying to, you know, um, give more away, more responsibility away and, and basically, Buy that, buy that, no, not out the buy that um, um, from an external company, where it basically, you know, we, we outsource the the data center, the network and security, the physical service, or so all the hardware is outsourced, all the way up to you know virtualizations and and the, and the containers that are that come with, and then the shared responsibility very often is the the operating system where you know we have some um, some responsibility, but also the the cloud provider, and then the further up we go, you know, if we also utilize the platform as a service. Then on top of that, we have the runtime environment. We have the databases that someone takes care of. And then all we have to deal with is kind of the security and the integration, security to some extent, that's kind of like a shared responsibility. Um, and then certainly if you go into software as a service, we're basically 
utilize everything from a provider, then all I really have to care about is the data. The data as well is a little bit shared responsibility because you know we have KPIs with our cloud providers. They have to uh, making sure no one gets access to that data from you know if, if it's shared infrastructure and so on. Um, but everything else is 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 100% managed by the provider, by the cloud provider. This is just important to understand where we are, and then also when it comes to the applications that we deploy and, and implement, you know, depending on what the application is, we only have to deal with so much. Like I said, if we implement, for example, IHG or the IAS, IPS, which are software as a service applications, then we have to deal with, you know, some sort of configuration, but mainly the data within the application. Everything else is outside of our responsibility. Hope that makes sense. Then back to Carson. Perfect. Thanks, Alessandro, for that. So let's start with this. You probably remember some years ago, digital transformation was the buzzword. And let's put in some numbers here. If you look at the last four decades, uh, they have shown that transformation or technical evolution happens constantly. So even today, many companies are in the transition process towards cloud. That's clear. And also the speed of cloud adoption has increased in the last few years. So one of the reasons is indeed the SAP Cloud First strategy. And on top of that, also now the impact of the COVID-19 that has made organizations, or let's say where existing business models are no longer work, they had to be shifted to the digital world, utilizing cloud in most cases to continue making business in this strange time. So it's always an evolving process and we currently in the process from cloud uh, to the intelligent enterprise. However, not every company out there is already using this rich feature set that SAP always um, talks about, about the intelligent enterprise. So let's take a look at uh, SAP's cloud strategy. SAP has already set the course for cloud transition already 11 years ago. They acquired Ariba, success factors, Concur, and in 2016, S4HANA or SAP HANA Cloud Platform was established, and it has been rebranded to SAP Cloud Platform in 2017. And today, as Alessandro already said, it is called the SAP Business Technology Platform, which is the successor of the SubCloud Platform. So the support of the core SAP systems as they currently exist will be discontinued in a few years. So the migration to to the HANA database and also a change to S4 are unavoidable, at least if you stick with SAP. And in short, SAP customers have to move to the cloud because only there the new features and products will be made available with many advantages. And um, SAP targets for cloud revenues in the next four years underlines also the importance of the transformation strategy in general. Let's take a look uh, at this blank page. So first, an increasing number of business applications and processes are currently replaced with these nice multi-tenant and subscription-based software as a service solutions, like the ones you can see here on the left-hand side. And as a result, integration is required, maybe with infrastructure that runs on-premise or applications from the SAP cloud portfolio. So cloud opens the world for the development of new customer and also partner applications and also a third party integration. So one example is for is the introduction of success factors that replaces traditional HCM. And with this, there's a need to have a business technology platform or a platform in general that acts as a data hub to ensure the integration with on-prem and with other software as a service solutions. And the business technology platform comes with different environments and it also runs on different providers. So we'll talk about that in a minute in more detail. So in summary, you can say the combination of both platform as a service and software as a service provides all the tools SAP has traditionally sold. So the new cloud tools allow customization, they bring completely new development models and extension capabilities and integration capabilities, but also they bring new challenges to solve that are related to security as well. Let's take a look 
at the business technology platform um, and start with that with a yeah overview about the advantages and use cases first. So first of all, as I said, it's constantly evolving. So it's always on the move. It's considered as a future proof approach that will surely see many improvements and many changes over the next couple of years. And by definition, a platform as a service means that the cloud provides the hardware, the runtime, and also the operating system, and even containers or the management layer around it. So it supports multiple deployment scenarios, whether the underlying infrastructure is on-premise or private cloud, or even it runs in a multi-cloud environment. And as such, a platform provides tools and also security architectures to ensure the security and the privacy of the data and the user. And we'll come back to these core services later on as well. And also a cloud platform reduces, or let's say it, it shifts typical investment costs, so CAPEX to operating costs. It means you no longer have to invest before in any kind of software or hardware, you can just utilize the existing tools and infrastructure from the cloud. So the operation of the cloud platform requires security measures, as I've been said, from the platform provider, that is always SAP, as well as the customer, that is the user of the platform. And in summary, if you think of the business technology platform, there are four main use cases. The first is indeed integrate. That means no matter a process is running on-prem or in the cloud, you can connect both together. So there are no networking restrictions and there are plenty of tools and technologies like APIs, microservices that allow an easy cloud consumption and integration can extend, meaning by simply adding a capability that would not be available otherwise. So like, for example, you can fire up a, a HANA database for data persistence, and you need the business technology platform as a central element between software as a service and on-premise applications. Of course, you operate. That means you outsource the workload and you make use of the scalability the security and patching and availability. So all the advantages that a platform brings compared to an on-premise solution. So you also make use of the security by default approach that comes with every cloud application. And of course you can build. So it means you can extend, you can create new applications based on many programming languages and development environments that are available through the platform. If you look at the, um, let's say, the distribution of such a platform, it is available in, let's say, two different kind of flavors. First, SAP runs its own high security and certified data centers around the world. And the second option is that SAP partners with other cloud infrastructure providers. And currently, it supports AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google, and Alibaba Cloud. And finally, the cloud platform also provides elasticity, meaning a demand-oriented provision and also scaling capabilities that allows you to experiment with new applications very quickly. So you don't need to invest in expensive software and hardware first, and you can just yeah, experiment with tools and POCs. <clears throat> now let's take a look on the business technology platform account model its regions and services in a little bit more detail. So first of all, the central entry point to the cloud platform or the business technology platform is the cockpit. That's where you can access your accounts and applications, where you manage all your activities. And also you can use a command line to do that. And those are typically administrators, developers, also known as platform users. And the cockpit is structured according to global accounts, so one or many sub-accounts. So you can have a trial account or you can have an enterprise account. So a global account is at the end used to manage sub-accounts, the members, the entitlements, and the quotas. And the sub-account again is uh, used to structure global accounts according to organizational, regional, or even project requirements. <clears throat> so there are entitlements 
and quotas that have been purchased for a global account and you have that have to be assigned to the individual sub accounts so when you purchase an account you're entitled to use something that like a specific set of resources like the amount of memory that can be allocated to your application in this case the quota <clears throat> we talk about regions um, based on regional and also on data protection requirements an organization may have uh, you can let's say have sub accounts in different regions around the world so a customer can decide where to operate the services and where to persist the data a region is always chosen at the sub account level that means regions are provided either by sap themselves or the mentioned infrastructure as a service partners that operate the infrastructure layer of the regions where sap operates the platform layer on top of that so by the way the region that is assigned to your sub account doesn't uh, have to be directly related to your location so you could be located in the united states for example but operate a sub account that is located in europe that's quite normal and finally we have the services and tools and both depend more or less on the environment chosen so services are at the heart of the business technology platform they are what makes the platform so attractive and at the end that's also where sap makes the money so those are running either today and currently in neo or the multi-cloud environment and there is no let's say availability or feature parity across all runtimes at the moment so the strategy of sap is to offer a runtime agnostic services and also to make use of cross-service consumption and that is the clear architecture for the for the future but not yet the target state so you can find more information on the offered services also if you take a look at the service description guide we will attach this to the presentation and finally we have the business users or application users that are the end users to your application that you host on your business technology platform so the business technology platform does not persist users so it, it uses the concept of federated identities and it outsources the authentication and the user management to another identity provider <clears throat> one more thing um, SAP is currently renovating and it's adding additional functionalities to the business technology platform. So in a phased approach, uh, SAP is upgrading the accounts from feature set A to B. And that means that uh, there's a new cloud management tool set that will bring, for example, a new cockpit, uh, additional features like directories, helping you to structure your sub accounts, uh, custom properties and labels, there's a new command line interface and there will be reworked APIs and much more. That's it in a nutshell for the business technology platform, its account model, regions and services. <clears throat> Here, as I said, just shortly for your information, the service description guide where you can take a look and find all currently offered services from the business technology platform uh, online. Okay, now let's have a deeper look at the cloud environments. So each environment provides at least one application runtime and it comes with its domain model, with its own domain model, with its own user and role management logic. So there is on the left side, we have the multi cloud foundation and on the right side, we have the Neo environment. And except for Neo, the infrastructure for the environment is completely provided by the hyperscalers. So you can say um, that the data storage and the persistence are outsourced to the cloud infrastructure providers. And the multi-cloud foundation, it serves as a basis of uh, the sub-business technology platform and it lets you choose from different infrastructures and environments and also runtime. So it comprises normally three different environments. One is the Cloud Foundry environment, there's the Kima environment and there's also the ABAP environment, I will talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> At first, let's start with the NEO, which is the oldest one that's available for nine years now, and it runs and is operated purely on SAP's own data centers. 
So in contrast, SAP has been following a multi-cloud strategy for the past years. So the multi-cloud environments are available in many regions worldwide and run on the four major cloud providers. Like I said, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Alibaba. And uh, the goal, the target is to leverage existing investments in cloud infrastructure partners and to serve customers with a greater flexibility and uh, having the cloud vendor of choice. So typically most customers are already using AWS or Microsoft and they can make use of the hyperscaler infrastructures and their capabilities. And um, also the multi-cloud foundation is important to understand it has its own managed network that is controlled by SAP and is on top of the supporting infrastructure layer. So contract and also the administrative tools are also uh, completely from SAP as from the point of view of the, of the end customer. Okay, first take a look, we we'll take a look at the NEO environment. Mm, here you can develop more or less HTML5, Java and SAP HANA applications that are running in a modular container, modular runtime container. So mainly it is used with the web IDE or with the SAP HANA tools. You can use sub UI5 that enables you to develop extensive user interfaces for your web-based business applications. And also, even though it is no longer available for new customers, it is still in maintenance by SAP. You can take a look at the Cloud Foundry environment. It is an open source, a multi-cloud platform, open source based, and it has a container-based architecture and it runs applications in any programming language. So it enables a developer to use different programming languages, different runtimes, and also backing services. And with the SAP Cloud Foundry, um, you can say that it's, as a, as, this is SAP's future strategy for the, for the cloud development. So new services will be only provided on multi-cloud instead of Neo. And customers and partners, they will benefit from the additional services and environments that are only offered on the multi-cloud foundation, like the business application studio, the SAP integration suite, or also the choice for Kima or ABAP runtimes. So it is based on the SAP cloud application programming model that somehow supports and complements the ABAP RESTful programming model. <clears throat> and one of the primary qualities, let's say, is indeed the microservice compliance. And SAP Cloud Foundry, uses Maven, uses Spring, it supports tools like GitHub and Jenkins for source code management. So there's a lot of stuff available already, the community is big, and the positive consequence is just that using Cloud Foundry 12-factor multi-target application means you can deploy them on any infrastructure as a service provider. And that allows an organization to follow a multi-cloud strategy and to avoid any vendor locks or any dependencies they may they may be afraid of. Next one is the Kima environment. It's more or less uh, the so-called platform extension factory Kima runtime that offers a fully managed Kubernetes-based runtime that is based on the open source project Kima, which lets you make use of serverless functions, also container microservices more or less. It connects to SAP, it connects also to non-SAP applications, and you can use it to run workloads in a highly scalable environment. So you can build event or API based extensions with that. And every Kima environment consists out of a Kubernetes cluster that is provisioned through the project Gardener, which is an SAP uh, project uh, on the cloud provider and also on a region of choice. And the last one, the third environment we talk about is uh, the ABAP environment. That's the so-called um, sub-business technology ABAP environment, or the internal code name is also Steampunk. That is more or less an environment that runs on top of Cloud Foundry, but this is more under the hood, so it uh, seems to be a different environment. So with Steampunk or ABAP, you can create a new space for ABAP development, which allows you to create extensions for ABAP-based products, like, for example, an S4HANA cloud. So you can transform existing ABAP code, custom code to the cloud. And this is really interesting because you can extend, for example, the S4HANA public cloud 
that otherwise is limited or does not cover some of the processes a customer would, would need, you just extend functionality and you integrate everything using public APIs. And with this environment, you can also make use of the ABAP RESTful programming model, in short, RAP. And also one more important thing to mention here, all new customers are provisioned by default on the multi-cloud foundation. So currently SAP does not have any timelines or deadlines to place for the, for the end of the support of the new environment. As I said before, it's still in use and it's still under maintenance. <clears throat> and that was our overview about the business technology platform. To finish that, we have to talk about additional component. This is really, uh, it's really important in this uh, space. It's the SAP Cloud Connectivity Service and the Cloud Connector. Those are important components for implementing hybrid architectures. So if you want an application or service that runs on the SAP Business Technology Platform to access data from your on-prem backend, you have to use the Cloud Connector. For example, you want to integrate with your S4 system, a sub BW or a HANA database, you need it in this step. So technically, the SAP Cloud Connector is a piece of software. It's just an, an agent that is installed in your on-prem landscape and it acts as a um, reverse invoke proxy between the platform and the local network. So once you have configured that and you, you have paired that to your sub account, a secure tunnel is established. So you don't have to open any inbound ports in your firewall and also your SAP backends do not have to be exposed to the internet. You can connect also a single cloud connector installation to multiple sub accounts if you like to do so. And the cloud connector enables fine granular access controls. It supports audit logging, supports a role-based administration using LDAP. And the access to internal resources that you like to expose through the cloud connector, like BAPIs, RFCs, or OData services, they, those are strictly secured and configured using destinations in the business technology platform. A destination more or less describes the connection details to on-prem, like the URL and the authentication mechanism that, has, that should be used for that destination. So here you typically define a virtual host name that will be mapped to a physical one. And there are different types of destinations and you can see a destination as a central artifact that can be utilized by different cloud applications once it is defined. And finally, the SAP Cloud Connector enables single sign-on between the business technology platform and your SAP backend systems. So the Cloud Connector has a built-in PKI and issues short-lived certificates to propagate the, the cloud user identity towards the on-prem system. That's more or less all the tasks of the Cloud Connector in a nutshell. So now let's take a look at our exciting cloud security services where we will focus on this. So cloud is a large area with a countless use cases. And if you look at the many possibilities, it quickly become clear that you simply cannot cover all topics and as often, Specialization is required and Exciting's focus is clearly in the area of identity and access management. And that includes hybrid and cloud solutions. So it takes a holistic view on that topic. <clears throat> if we look at the well-known secure operations map and also our exciting uh, focus on that, uh, then it's clear that we cover user authentication um, and single sign-on capabilities. We covered the topic of user and identity management, roles and authorizations, but also the risk management. So this is more or less a common best practice uh, map that is structured in 16 topics across five layers. And we are more or less, yeah, include the services and products with our focus that is related to IDM, signal sign-on and GRC. <clears throat> So if you break it further down, you could easily say that all SAP companies are faced with three major challenges 
associated with the use of on-prem and cloud-based applications. The first is ID life cycle. How do you get your users into the cloud application? And how to do that in an automated way, in a compliant way, and maybe also driven by workflows. The second is authorization. So how are the users correctly authorized? And there are lots of changes as well when it comes to cloud applications and authorizations. And finally, authentication, covering single sign-on, covering multi-factor authentication, and also integration into existing identity providers for identity federation. So in summary, customers have to master these identity access management challenges in the on-premise world, where existing concepts and tools may be already in place, but also for all these new cloud native applications that are available in the cloud ecosystem. And of course, the business technology platform with all its environments and applications. So choosing the right strategy to manage the identities and authentication is one of the first things a business has to do when it comes to running applications in the cloud. And here customers are confronted with the same problems and same issues as on premises. So you don't, you don't want to have a second user ID. You don't want to have a separate set of credentials when accessing your cloud applications. You want to have an automated identity management in the best case and a single sign on. And these are all topics that we somehow cover with our exciting cloud security services. So this is a service offering that more or less incorporates our senior experts in all required areas. So the consulting approach includes core competencies for identity management and user ID lifecycle, compliance management around access, authorization risks and roles, and also secure authentication with single sign-on. So the services we offer here include customized workshops and our methodology and holistic approach and with, with the target to just find the best solution for the customer based on his existing uh, environment and also requirements. <clears throat> All right. Now let's have a look at the SAP Enterprise security products and services. Again, this is a short overview as we will dive deeper into each of the products that we highlight in the next sessions. So here mainly SAP has capabilities for user authentication and provisioning, which is a requirement for all integration scenarios. Um, so the identity authentication and the identity provisioning services. And those, those two are considered as the core security services for the business technology platform. And since some months, they have been summarized under the term SAP Cloud Identity Services, and they are currently merge more and more together into one solution. Guess that will happen till the end of the year. And on top of this core layer, we have the secure development services that are part of the platform offering, so like the XSUAA, the, the SAP Credential Store, the Cloud Connector, and also the, the Cloud Application Programming Model. In the area of risk and compliance, all and foremost, we are focusing on the SAP Cloud Identity and Access Governance that somehow enriches the cloud identity services with capabilities for governance, risk analysis, and also workflows. <clears throat> and finally, on top of that, the inside layer that with the, with the SAP Data Custodian, for example, public cloud users have transparency and control over their public cloud resources and applications, or with the trust center, they can get real-time insights into the cloud systems, like transparency for availability, downtime information, maintenance, and also upcoming releases. So in summary, there are six services and products to authenticate and provision users and privileges across the SAP universe, as well as, as to manage them from a governance perspective. And those are the six solutions that we mainly focus on. <clears throat> so finally, let's have a short look on the three layers of a hybrid identity and access management. 
And again, we will come to back to these in more details in the upcoming sessions. First is the authentication and single sign-on layer. And this is a very important one as it supports the concept of identity federation that almost every cloud application follows nowadays. So the classic approach of protecting networks was to put up parameter defenses, typically firewalls, IPS, IDS systems. That is still valid. However, in the today's cloud world, in a mobile world, the classic perimeter no longer exists. So identity is the new control level of the cloud security. And identity could be seen as a new parameter in the cloud native world. So that is based always on a zero trust approach. What means? That means that by definition, every request towards a cloud application is considered as untrusted and it needs to be authenticated. It needs to be checked before granting access. And when using an underlying platform like the SAP Business Technology Platform and its services, you are able to centralize the user authentication. On top of that, you can automate your identity management. It can be done in different flavors. It can be done very simple and uh, maybe uh, job, job scheduled, but you can also put in your complete compliant identity management. You can have a integration with your existing IDM systems. You can have workflows on that. And on top of that, you can also enrich capabilities with access governance. So these are the three layers of a really compliant hybrid identity and access management. <clears throat> and as you already know, the two solutions that we talk about, the identity authentication service and the identity provisioning service, those come, come pre-integrated, so bundled as part of many software as a service applications, like for example, S4HANA Public Cloud, Success Factors, or the integrated business planning. And in the next sessions, we will show you the inner workings of these solutions. So the identity provisioning service and its combination with SAP IDM, for example, the SAP single sign-on and identity authentication solution, and also how to enrich identity management with GRC capabilities in a hybrid landscape. Well, that's it. Um, for now, thanks for still being here. And uh, now I would hand over again to Alessandro and also later to the question and answer part. Thank you. Thank you, Carsten. Um, yeah, like we said um, in the beginning, we have six more webinars upcoming. Today was just about, you know, again, breaking ground, getting an overview, understanding what is there, how does it work, how does it work. And then in, especially in the next three webinars, and webinar two, three, and four, We'll specifically talk um, about the, the three main services that there are in the cloud. Um, we'll be starting about IPS, the Identity Provisioning Service, next week. That's next Tuesday. Then we talk about the IHG uh, in two weeks, and then IAS, uh, entire authentication, um, on April 6th. And then in the end, we have three more that are, you know, when it comes to hybrid solutions, how we can integrate with existing solutions like access control, like IDM. Um, how does that work and what can be done? There were not very many questions, but if you guys have questions, uh, feel free to um, put them into the chat. Um, the slide before that one here, we, we just provided a couple of links to a couple of blocks that you can um, you know, uh, check out if you want to learn more um, in general about the IHG, IAS, and so on. We have a couple of blocks there that go very um, in, in, in into great detail. Um, there was one question I just want to point out, you know, whether the recording and the presentation will be available. Yes, it will. We'll, we'll have the recording available to you tomorrow. So it takes 24 hours to generate and then you will get an automated email by the system that will contain the, 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 the video, but also the, the PowerPoint. Um, and then we had a few questions and maybe I just read them out loud. Um, Carson, we try to answer them on the go. Um, let me pop it up now. It's a lot of questions coming in. I just lost the one. Um, yes, so there was a question, you know, regarding on-premise and cloud. How do you manage integrate IDM and GRC? That's a good question. Um, that's exactly what we'll be talking about in the next couple of webinars. So today, like I said, just overview those very specific integrations and how it works and how it can be done. Um, we will specifically address 
in, 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 the next, in the next webinars. That's why it's a series of webinars. That's why we have seven webinars because it's a lot of content. There's a lot of questions you guys have. Um, you know, just, just stay tuned and, and follow the next ones. And then it will, I'm pretty sure we will, will answer them um, in, in those. Um, then we had a few more. Um, one was, uh, what is the role of IAG in the overall subsecurity landscape? Um, that's also the one that we will, we will answer in, in, in the third session where we talk specifically about IAG. IAG is the Identity Access Governance, where we basically, it's similar to sub access control. If you're familiar with sub access control, IAG is kind of the access control in the cloud. It's complementary to access control, basically extending that functionality we have on the on-premise world with access control. We can extend that also into the cloud. So we can run, for example, we can we can run risk analysis against cloud application. We can provision cloud applications. So we can we have a workflow driven um, um, provisioning workflows where we can request roles or groups depending on on the target system and then basically provision users into the cloud we have firefighting capability the emergency access management kind of um, we have that as well we have the user access review it's called compliance reviews all that will be part of the IHG webinar we'll talk more specifically about that but IHG is all about governing um, access governance at the end of the day let me see Carson we have four more minutes if you want to point one out here. Let me look, take a look. Also, SAP is planning to provide compliant provisioning and access control for cloud applications like Ariba and SuccessFactors non ABAP. Yeah, more or less, there is something on the roadmap for that, especially for um, uh, for Ariba. So it's not yet fully integrated, but it will be in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. Um. Right, what else do we have? Um, Carson, there's one. How are the existing integrations via the web service BAPIS are impacted by the new landscape of the business technology platform? That's a good question for our development guys. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sure we can answer that offline and then we provide a typical, an answer to you. Okay. Then Another question looks like there's a lot of interest for, for GRC uh, and IEG. The question is, will uh, access control on premise go out of support after IHG comes up? Um, what's important is to understand that IHG is not the replacement of access control. Access control is still in support for or version 12.0 is still in support for, I think, in the, until the end of 2025. Um, and IHG, you know, especially in the in that bridging scenario, which we'll be talking about, um, I think in webinar six, um, where we can basically extend access control into the, into the cloud with IHG. So basically, both products will work together, and we have a seamless integration from a risk analysis perspective, from a workflow perspective, where we can then basically manage the that our our hybrid landscape from on premise, but also the cloud. So IHG, to some extent can certainly replace um, access control depending on what your use case is and what your requirement is but that really depends and IHG is not at the moment at least not at the moment it's not foreseen to replace access control it's more to extend its functionality into the cloud even though there's a little bit of overlap but there's certainly much more to IHG than there is to access control and there's also limitations with that because again access control is an on-premise application where you know we can modify and do a lot of things it's an up up system we can enhance and add custom code IHG is software as a service very very limited so there's 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 um, not as much flexibility when it comes to IHG there's certainly there's trends going that direction but at the moment it's not at the moment it's very difficult to replace access control with IHG especially if you have a lot of customizations um perfect anything else um, Carson, you see that we should answer here. Otherwise, we'll we'll follow up on the questions that we haven't answered um, right now. We'll follow up by email. As always, you will receive an email, like I said, with the the recording, the PowerPoint, so you have all that. Um, and we also try to answer the, the questions offline, and we'll send them out um, to all the the participants here. With that being said, thank you very much for your attention. Um, we will have a quick um, survey when we close the webinar. 
I would really appreciate if you can give us feedback. It's about it just takes less than a minute, just five questions, how it was, and 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 give us a little bit of input that we can then use in the next webinars. Um, with that being said, thank you very much, and looking forward to um, yeah seeing you all next week on on Tuesday for the for the next webinar. Thank you very much, Carson, as well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys.